Hello my lovely people, Grace here by Cadonia. I am up on the mountain with plenty of motorbikes as usual. There's my big black beastie, the Trials bikes, the Montessa, the TRS, and then of course the CRF 450 RL. It's a 2021 and it has a very small stock fuel tank. The stock fuel tank is only about 7 litres, so that is why today we're going to be installing this cool looking new IMS tank. This tank is now 11 litres, it takes the place of the stock tank, so it's not a huge change to the look or the feel of the bike, just a couple of extra litres on there to get you through. Now this is not the first time we've modified this bike and it will not be the last time. So today we also have these fantastic looking Acherbis Rally Pro handguards which have the aluminium right through them to make them nice and strong. We are going to replace the flimsy plastic stock handguards. So today we're going to walk you through the installation process for the new IMS tank. First remove all the fuel from the fuel tank and kids don't try this at home. This is not a work health and safety approved method of removing the petrol from your petrol tank. However, it is very effective. There we go, petrol all done. And now we're going to remove the rear rack because we have to pull the seat off. So removing those bolts. It's a really good rack actually, locally made in Thailand. I will put the brand name in the comment section. And then the next task is just to remove the seat. Easy job as well, just remove those two bolts at the back, but we've already done that because they were also the bolts that were holding the rack on. So keep your bolts and your spacers, don't lose any of that stuff. And there you go, we're in. Now we're going to remove those plastic side panels. There's three bolts in each one. Easy, easy. There we go. Now we can actually see the fuel tank and the mounts that we need to undo in order to pull it right off the bike. Repeat for the other side and then you're all good. And now we need to unbolt the fuel tank itself. The whole assembly needs to come right off. So remove that bolt up front. And then you'll see that you've got two bolts at the back there near your ECU. Here you can see that lovely bright yellow box. That is the Vortex ECU, which we installed a few months ago. The Vortex ECU is an awesome bit of kit. Not only do you get some extra horsepower using the Vortex ECU, but it's designed to work with four different kinds of exhausts. As you can see here, we have the Yoshimura RS4 exhaust. Now, without remapping and just running stock with the RS4 exhaust, we were not having good results. The bike was jerky and it wasn't great to ride. The power delivery was everything but smooth. So we chucked the Vortex on there, like I said, we got more horsepower and we also got the choice of three modes which are really easy to adjust using a little screwdriver on those dials which you can't see right now but you'll see in a minute and it solved the problem of the remapping for the new exhaust. So big fan of the Vortex ECU. Now be really careful as you pull this metal fuel tank off because those edges you can see where that join is, those edges are really really sharp metal. And as your work health and safety advisor, I'm just going to tell you to be careful of that. So just pulling the tank up and off gently, you're being very gentle here because you need to remove the fuel line and you need to remove the sensor connector. Now there's no magic to this, the sensor is just a normal electrical plug, so hold in those tabs and ease it off gently. The fuel line, you will see you have a special little green clip, you need to unclip it. Very technical descriptions going on here. 
Now back to our work health and safety warnings. We have our first injury. There you go. We're going to have to write that one up. Paperwork, incident report. Oh my goodness. So yeah, don't cut yourself on the fuel tank. And just for interest, there are those dials on the ECU, so you can dial it up and down from enduro mode to race mode. Okay, so we have removed the stock tank, removed those four or five bolts you have there, which are holding the fuel pump assembly in. There you go. Be very, very gentle. You've got a delicate little fuel filter on there, so don't be too heavy-handed as you ease it out of its housing. There we go. There's your fuel pump. Now this we need to stick in the new IMS tank. Make sure you check your fuel filter there. Just check and see whether it is disgusting and clogged already. If it is disgusting and clogged, maybe get some Google Tech filters. Now we are removing the O-ring and the dust seal. So as you can see, there are two items, O-ring and dust seal, on the stock assembly. Now you will not be using those because the IMS comes with its own special o-ring and you do not need to use the dust seal with the IMS. So keep that in mind replacing the dust seal and the o-ring with just that one dust seal from IMS. All right so o-ring goes on, the new o-ring goes on, there we go and then we're going to mount the fuel pump assembly in the new tank. Again, not rocket science, you just have to line up the bolt holes and get that done up nicely. Of course, make sure you don't over tighten your bolts. This is a plastic fuel tank and so that's gonna go badly. Also note that IMS provides a whole new set of bolts for the fuel pump assembly. So get that all lined up and done up. As you can see, I'm wearing my work health and safety regulation flip-flops. Don't be like me. I am, as always, a bad example. As always, good practice to do up your bolts in a diagonal to diagonal pattern because that way we are fastening down the housing evenly on the rubber o-ring and we're not overstressing any single particular bolt. There we go. Look at that. Beautiful. So then what happens is that it starts raining and you rush to get the motorbike under cover. And then it stops raining again and you come back here and put the motorbike back. If you like, you are welcome to skip this step. Righto, so now we're going to add the two mounting brackets as supplied by IMS. You're going to bolt them onto your fuel tank. You can see you've got the front mounting bracket and then you've got the slide one, which is what your seat is going to hook into. So bolt that one in. Again, don't over torque anything. You're still dealing with a plastic fuel tank here. Now you're going to find yourself with the little rubber stopper supplied in the IMS kit. It goes with the button head bolt. There is only one button head bolt in the entire kit, so make sure you've got those two pieces together. So bolt, washer and stopper. Now you're going to bolt this down to the right rear mounting point for the tank. This is where the stock fuel tank was originally bolted down directly, but now we're moving to a plastic tank. So the plastic tank is not actually going to bolt down here at all. What you're gonna do is you're gonna bolt down the rubber stopper instead, and then you're gonna have your IMS fuel tank simply resting against the rubber stopper rather than bolted down directly. So there you go, tighten that one up, very nice and done. Okay, and now we're ready to put the IMS fuel tank on. We are just gonna do the whole process in reverse. Again, there is no magic here. Just attach your fuel line, just attach your sensor, and then ease that new fuel tank into place. It's easier said than done, but it's definitely doable. 
Beautiful. All right. And so now we're going to stick that first bolt in. We're going to bolt down the fuel tank up front. Very nice. And then once we've done that, we're going to go and we're going to grab the L-shaped bracket supplied by IMS in their kit. Here is the bracket in action. Now, one of the holes in the bracket is slotted. You can see that this goes on the upside. It's the one that's going to attach to the fuel tank. So it's going to allow a little bit of movement where necessary. And the normal round hole, of course, just bolts straight down onto the frame. Now we are on the home stretch. We just need to put the shrouds back on, and that means three little bolts, two silver, one black. And again, we're just doing what we did before, but in reverse. Righto, chuck the seat back on, chuck the rack back on if you've got one, and she's looking whole again. There we go, look at that. The tank does not look oversized, but a couple of extra litres will make all of the difference. Now the IMS kit doesn't come with a little breather hose for the new fuel cap, so you're going to have to supply one of those yourself. Not too difficult. And anyway, now comes the moment of truth. Put some fuel in that lovely new fuel tank of yours and see if the bike runs. There you go, now you're all done. New IMS fuel tank fitted, you've got 11 litres of fuel, beautiful. Now when you're storing the old fuel tank, the stock one, make sure that you remember to keep with it the old o-ring and dust seal which you removed from around the fuel tank mounting because you'll need them if you ever decide to reuse or sell that fuel tank. Alright, all done, go ride your motorcycle.